labor into the, let us labor into that rest. Now, now, when we look at the translation of this process, let us not hesitate or hasten, therefore, to enter into the rest. Now, now, listen to what he says. Don't get ahead of me. Lest any man feel, or lest any man fall after some example of unbelief. Let's look at that one more time. Let us labor, therefore, to enter, to enter into the rest. What is the rest? He goes on to tell you. Let's look at the process. Lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. Now, let's look at something right here. Now, it could be translated, let us uh, hesitate or hissen, therefore, to enter into his. No, let that, that us not rebel to enter into what God has for our life to make it a lot better for us. He goes and said, it tells about the process of how we got to be rooted in the word of God, you know, and, and, and when situations come that we won't fall in the area of unbelief, that when situations come in our life, we're not so quick to bail out in a situation that's going on around us. I, 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 I heard a man of God say that, 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 that we got to be like trees that's planted by rivers of water. Now, now, now you got to hear me on this. We got to be like trees that's planted by rivers of water that bring forth its fruit in a season. See, John 15 told you that. You, you understand what I'm saying? He, he told you that already, that you got to be divinely connected. The Holy Spirit is the very waters that root you and grows you with the wisdom and knowledge. And he says in the book of James, if any man like it, let him ask. But if you root it in the right position, God will give you everything you need. And so he says once again, even in Psalm 1, he said, he said that, 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 yea, though I walk through the shadows of the valley of death, I will feel no evil. This, this is Psalms 23. That we will understand that now God has given us the opportunity that in the midst of all that we're going through, that we got to be rooted and planted with the right person who guides us in the process of what he, what, what we're going. And let, let me say, let me, let me, let me say something here. Blessed is not the man that walk in the counsel of the ungodly. That's been unrooted. Nor sit in the seat of the scornful. That's been unrooted. But as a delight in the law of the Lord, that's been rooted. And in his law does we meditate day and night. Joshua 1 8, that's rooted. Then let us be like trees. Am I in there? That's planted by the streams of the presence of the power of the Holy Spirit. I believe I'm speaking to somebody. Who leaves all shits and not with her. John, in the book of John, chapter 15, he said that everything that doesn't bear fruit, he take it away. But everything that buried fruit, he prunes and it grows more fruit. See, we got to get there and get rooted and get planted in the right place. This day and time, we got Christians and men of God in the church. They go to two or three different churches. Come down to God, the departing from the kingdom of God. They don't know who's going to bury who. You got the people in the church, all pastors, all, who's going to bury who? Because now it becomes into a money scandal. And it becomes into a good show of who's going to preach who's of the funeral. So now it becomes in a big thing about who's going to preach who go out of here. Because this is what has become in the body of Christ. We're not really worried about the lives of people anymore and where their soul is going. We're worried about the process of who's going to get the recognition or whatever it may be to get the ideas, to get the what we call the accolade. Oh, Lord, Lord let, me, let, me, let me move here. Because see, y'all y'all going y'all gonna to get me to speaking about some things that you don't want to hear. Because see, you don't get this kind of preaching. See, I'm not going to hoop at you and I'm going to yell at you and I'm going to make you feel good physically. I'm going to tell you what the truth said. And the word of God says the truth will set you free. The Bible said, let us labor, therefore, the book of Hebrews, chapter 4, 11 chapter, 11 verse, excuse me. Let us labor, therefore, until we enter into this rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. Now, God gives us examples all day of what happens to people. We can use the word over in the book of Luke when the man, about the rich man, when he'd sat there and eaten his turkey legs at the table and Lazarus sat there and the dogs began to lick his wound, but it came the time for them to depart. And when they departed, one went one way, one went the other way. In other words, uh, Lazarus went into the bosom of Abraham and guess what? The, the, the rich man went into Hades and he cried out that, that, that the Lord would send somebody that he may have a drop of water put on his tongue. But, but God said, no, your decision could have been made when you was looking upon my servant when he needed something to eat. See, see, God will give you an example of what happens to people when they fall into unbelief. See, see, when, 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 let, let, let me show you something here. I'm not trying to be all, I'm not trying to be all day with y'all, but I, I want you, I, I got so much that I want to give you, and I want to finish this Hebrews up, and I'm, we're going to call it a night. How is that? Okay, God bless you. I thank you for that. Matt, let's look at this. Let's look at this. Let's look at a dangerous thing. 
in the body of Christ. A dangerous position to be in in the body of Christ. So look at over the book of Romans. Let's look over in the book of Romans. Um, when Paul cried out to the Romans and he talked to them about some things that's going on in their life, how God is really wanting them to be saved, that he know that's his first calling. See, the Bible said that when they ran away from they they ran away from their first they, they first love and they are going astray. They were not the gods that's under trees, gods that can't see, gods that can't eat, gods that can't hear. You know, they went after the other gods. And I look, look at it. He says, over in the book of Romans 10. We're going to go back to Hebrews here. Look at Romans 10. He said, brother, my heart and desires and prayers to God of Israel is that they might be saved. Let's look at that once again. The verse one, brothering all of us, my heart desires and prayers to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them a record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to the knowledge. The Bible talks about a man perish because of the lack of knowledge. The Proverbs speaks about that. Man perish because of the lack of knowledge. Now let's look at this. For they've been ignorant of God's righteousness. Talk about the command, talk about the statutes that God put in place. Even when he told them in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 8, if you come into this land, don't come up in the tripping. Because I'll make you an example of what the forefathers. I'll put you out there and let them, you know, they went around that mountain 40 days and 40 nights. And everywhere they went, it was a hump in the ground. You know, and to God, uh, uh, commanded Moses to put the serpent on the stick. And when you talk about the serpent on the stick, it really talks about the medical industry. If you look at the medical cross or the medical field, it's the serpent on the on the, on the the cross. And we'll talk about that another time. We're going to get into that. He said, "We're being ignorant of God's righteousness and being about being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about establishing their own righteousness, having submitted themselves unto righteousness and not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God." Now, 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 Christ is the end of the law. Now, that ought to tell you right there: born in the sin, but not of sin; born in the earth, but not of earth. I, I, and it's amazing to you you speak to people. And they, they, they brag and boast about how they talk about pastors, how they tell pastors off. And they don't know how bad they're digging themselves in a the hole. How they can't come to understand even the ignorance of their mind and their intellect of what's called a natural sense. They don't understand and believe how they can come and they talk to God people any kind of way. And they feel like they're a little bit more boisterous, a little bit more authoritative. And they try to con your mind into thinking that what they have from the educational point of view supersedes more than God from the revelatorial point of view. The Bible says once again, for they've been ignorant of God's righteousness and going about establishing their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. That's a dangerous thing. To be out of outside the will of God. And to be able to come in the face of God's people and talk to them in such a way that you got you got the ability to talk down on God's prophets and talk bad to them and, and snuff them out and, and just talk just talk ignorant to them and don't care nothing about them. And you think that makes you feel good. And you brag about how you talk to another man of God in such a way that you put them down. But your days are numbered. It's just a matter of time. Especially when you're old in age and you really don't understand. And yet you still open your mouth in such a way that you're putting against God's prophets and priests. The word of God tells you plainly and clearly, touch not my anointing, do my prophets no harm. As I said before, they gonna talk. They, when they stop talking to you, they start talking about you. It's just a matter of time. But woe, the Bible said, unto him. The Bible says woe. When he says woe, he means woe. But this is an example how God says that even when you understand that your righteousness is the, is, is the law. And he says in the fourth verse of the book of uh, Romans 10, for the Christ is the end of law for righteousness to everyone who that believe it. That's Mark 9 and 23. Let's go back to Hebrews in the name of Jesus. Let me read this on through. We got to get out of here. Let us labor therefore and enter the rest lest any man may fall after the same example of unbelief. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharp than any two-edged sword piercing, penetrating, even the dividing the sender of soul and spirit. That is a powerful move. In the joint marrow, what produces blood, in the discerning of the thoughts and the intent, am I in there, of the heart. 
Now, when you just focus on that particular part of scripture, let's get it a little breakdown and let's see what the amplified version says it to the point to bring a little bit more clarity to it. Now, we got to get out of here, but we love you. We, we know that you guys are with us tonight. And we thank you guys for being with us, a part of the service on the night. But we want to get some real good understanding about the swiftness of God's word. The grace of God's word, Psalms 46, all these things we went across, uh, the book of Corinthians, uh, second chapter, uh, but it is written, you know, that, that, that eyes, the believing of God's word work with precision, that he's a very present help in a very present time of need. Let's, let's move to Hebrews 4 and 12. For the word of God, look at, is living and active, full of power. Making it operative, uh, operative, energizing, effective. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. You know that word of God, it cuts coming and going. Am I piercing or penetrating as far as the dividing of soul, spirit, and completeness of a person? And both joint and marrow. He talking about. He talking about. That's some powerful words right there. When you got a word of God that can cut you, uh, ain't no knife on the earth can cut like that. Nothing. To divide the soul and spirit, in the joint and marrow. Look at this. The completeness of a person, in both joint and marrow, the deepest parts of our nature, exposing and judging. The very thoughts and intents of the heart. If you get a revelation of that and understand it, let, 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 let's want, before we get out of here, let, let's let's look at over here. Let's look at a new translation. Let's look at a new translation, ladies and gentlemen. God is living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword, and cuts as deep as they cut deep as the place where soul and spirit meets. Now he said it cut, it divides where the soul and spirit meet. Now we think about when God declared, decreed the power of God, the power of the spirit. Then when he would look at the beginning of the time when God created man, he said he made it from the dust of the earth. Because we understand when he made Adam, he didn't go to the dirt but one time. God never went back to the dirt. He began to divide another soul and spirit out of the rib of Adam. Am I, did I say something there? Did y'all catch that? The power of God to make after his own kind. Out of that what he created from the dust of the earth Now the Bible declares that when Adam was born There was two resurrections in his body There was two transformations Taking place with him The first one was from the dust of the earth Now that, that the, the, the Bible said he wasn't nothing But just a, just, a, just a living soul He was just laying there But when the Holy Spirit breathed Into his nostrils The soul and spirit collaborated And came together And now Adam became a living soul That's the power of God's word that when he speaks into you he brings life into you he brings the very things you need to live the joint and marrow the word judging a person through the intent no creature can no creature can hide from God everything is uncovered and exposed everything for him to see we got the answer when we see it before we come before the throne. Men of God and women of God, I tell you, it's always, always, always in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. A pleasure for you guys to be with me at Harvest New Life Church and Harvest New Life Studios here in the city of Dallas. I tell you, it, it's, it's amazing how God does so much in the process of what we do here and how he just uh, just just mesmerizes the mind of all who believe and touch it and know that he's possible to do everything in your life according to his word. And we want to let you guys know that in the midst, uh, even of this show, we, we're going to be back with you on Friday. We're going to be bringing the word. We're going to talk a little bit more about the process of how God's swiftness and uh, the power and effect of God's word and, and how we can really take advantage right now. As soon as we open our mouth, that God can come in and begin to move tons in our life of circumstances and situations completely out of the way. That I don't care how old you are, how young you say you are, God can yet move. They even talk about the process of Abraham and Sarah. God yet moved in the midst of them because his word was declared that that baby will come through her. But she laughed 
And she took she took Abraham and turned him over to his handmaid. And God said, no, that ain't going to be through the handmaid. It's going to be through you. God caught the woman of God even when she was old and decrepit.